What part of your career you think was the low point for you? Where you were just I imagine probably when the when the JGR deal dried up, that had been pretty difficult. But what part of your career were you, were you like least motivated to get out of bed in the morning? Oh man, <laughs> yesterday was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's been so many. I, 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 but that's the that's the in the grand scheme of things, the good thing it makes me appreciate it. It's made me work extra hard and pick myself up made me mentally stronger every single time but i'd say um if i've having to pick out ones was probably after the jgr thing went south i was like wow i wasn't ready that's this is that's it i had one shot i'm done um so that was a tough one and when i was kind of sitting out doing nothing i i'm like i have no skill sets nothing i'm not good at anything else i don't like anything else what what am i going to do with my life um so that was just miserable on me and, and my family and then uh, picking out others, I'd say I got that opportunity at BK Racing, and that was good. And then um, got to go to Go Fast Racing, and that was neat. And then um, when I took the gamble and bet on myself last year and really wasn't sure if it was going to work out, I'm like, did I work my whole life to get this far and keep progressing and then just to be done? And and it's all over at this yeah. point, and I was – I was a really hard person to be around, and it, it's a testament to my wife keeping me, you know, mentally going. You mentioned your wife. So, how helpful has she been in in helping you in those times? I mean, that you know, I always say there's a behind every good man, there's a better woman or a great woman. <laughs> um, and I know that you you sh- you know you share her with the public a lot in some of your social media, and you know, and let us into your life a little bit and what you're doing. Um, so how important has she been in that journey? Oh, I, I wouldn't be mentally put together without her. It's uh, she is a hundred percent my my other half. So I'm a I'm a tough. I feel like I put on a good um, a good front uh, as far as like keeping very composed and people thinking I, I'm composed all the time. And I am. I'm a strong, really strong person. This journey has made me tough, but. Um, I don't. I think I, I'm, I put on a real good front that people no, don't understand what goes on in my. I'll give you an example of yesterday, uh, even. But um, Taylor, how much she h- helps me to stay put together. I uh, I wouldn't get out of bed yesterday. I was so angry at myself over the Road America uh, race this weekend and frustrated that we threw away a. You don't want to say an easy win, but by far Potential the fastest win, car. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it was like we were leading that thing, and. Um, we had the, the windshield wiper sticking straight out so I could feel that was hurting downforce quite a bit and, and things. But And we had a left front tire issue because I locked it up. And I, I was just riding at like 30%. And I'm like, we're still leading the race. This thing is fast. Holy cow. We slapped some tires on, fixed that. I'm going to drive it 60% and we'll still win. And I was like, that's amazing how fast this car is. And then when the pit stop happened, we lost a lot of track position. And then made two mistakes one on the white flag obviously but um, coming through the field and still threw away what was my job to try and play catch up and get back to the front I I couldn't even I wouldn't get out of bed yesterday I was so angry at myself which is the worst you know as a driver when you feel like you let people down there's nothing uh, worse than that but um, she did nothing but pick me up, make me breakfast, uh, but how, just try and cheer pick me up. You up? I mean, what, what, what is required to build you back up after something like that that happened yesterday? Uh, just reminding me of like, hey, don't forget just a week ago, you almost won the Bristol night race, one of yeah. the toughest races. Like that's no fluke. And hey, just remember that, you know, you've, uh, I, I don't think of these things. I just think of how I can be the best um, for my team. And, and I'm a, I like to be perfect and I don't, <clears throat> I don't want to let anybody down. She's, Reminding me of all those things. She reminded me of, you know, hey, uh, just remember what you and that 95 team have built this year. Remember all these top fives and top tens you guys have been clicking off. That's not a fluke. You're, everybody's human. You make mistakes, you know. And I, I, and that <clears throat> it helped me, but I was still pretty hard You're on myself. Down. Yes. So what you, happened? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so. Well, basically what happened in the last corner. Yeah, so two things happened. I'll sum it up. Um, the pit stop um, had a hang up on the right rear and we lost a lot of position and and I should have been more mentally I didn't say anything I, I just to myself was like so angry and I feel like I didn't do a good job staying composed uh, to myself 
and I, I tried too hard. Um, so I missed a braking zone once and went through the dirt and I was like, am, am I stupid? Like I never do this. My number one rule on road courses, don't go off track. Don't blow a corner all day. If I do that, you, you run well. And I didn't stay composed. I did that. And I'm like, Matt, you moron. <laughs> what are you doing? You know? And then, uh, so then we still managed to come back and drive to second. And I was so mad cause we we're flying. I get to second and I'm in bells right there in front of me. I'm like, oh, all right, well, well, you know, blew this one and then go in the last corner. I'm like, whatever, we're second, just finished second. This is, uh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. I go in there in the 22, Austin Sindrick was on fresh tires flying through the field because sure. that place has turned into like homestead. <laughs> it's so worn out. And, uh, I'm going in the last turn. I'm like, oh, okay, he's behind me. Just make sure I don't crash in this last corner. You see how that turned out. I'm like, just watch my mirror. Make sure if he's going to dive it off in there. Because he was close. If he's going to dive in there under me, I don't want to chop across his nose and spin out in the last corner. So I just peek up in my mirror. I'm like, okay. I didn't drive in there hard. Just drove in there too high. Got in the marbles and just spun by looking like, okay, I don't want to crash. And by intending to not crash and not do something stupid, I did the dumbest thing I've ever done in my whole career. Like, ever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody's done something dumb. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean it's just part of it. It's growing. It's going to make you better. It For sure. It's, it's a, things because it was just a few days ago. But. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. Stink. I will. Right. You know, I, you got any stories for me of things sure. that embarrassed you oh, before? <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, the one thing that I would say is that, you know, when one when I would do something bad or something bad happens to me or I made a mistake or whatever, anytime, even if it's not your fault, is to think about. Think of something that you did five years ago, ten years ago, that was awful, that, that where you wouldn't want to get out of bed the next day, and how you're over that, how you're how you're past that, how that's not affecting you today, how that's not how that's not controlling the decisions you're making or what you're doing or where you are or who you're with, and think that this same thing will be a distant memory, and it won't yep. be affecting your day five years from now, it won't be affecting what job you have, it won't be affecting people you're around. And just try to remember that. Like, it's going to suck today. It's going <laughs> to suck for a few more days. But uh, in in weeks or months from now, it won't be the most important thing. You know, it won't be the one thing that's really, there'll be something else. Yep. Driving you crazy. Yep. You know? Oh, true. <laughs> um, you were talking about how uh, you bet on yourself, you know, took a risk getting out of 32. And I wanted to get you to explain that to us because I just have, you know, we hit, we basically have the the general idea that you're driving this 32 car for go fast. You'd been doing that for a while. You'd been working hard, and the perception was that you were making uh, you and other people as well. I'm sure you'd credit a lot of people on that team for for y'all's progression. But you were improving that team from where it had been once you got in it, right? And that's been kind of your mo, uh, much like a Kurt Busch or other guys. That every you know everywhere they go things get better and it's a combination of them and their ability to communicate and the people that they surround themselves with so you're doing that with this 32 car and maybe you got to a point to where you're thinking you know what uh my time's running out i'm getting older i think i've done everything i could do here i don't want to keep doing this i'm plateauing whatever and you decided to quit that job right the idea and the perception is that you quit the job without any op any other job right yep. so there was no phone call to 95 or nobody calling you you just got you said i'm quitting this job yep and there was no job opportunity lined zero. up zero how zero. And why in the why? hell would, <laughs> why in the world would you do that yep so this is the uh, one of those other mental battles and struggles where I, I mean I couldn't even I couldn't eat for like weeks hardly I was so stressed trying to figure out what do I do because I I got to a point where like you said uh, all the organizations I'd been lucky enough to go to and surround myself with the right people because you're only you're only as good as the people you got around you um, I'd gone to and improve that'd be my job and goal build the right people and let's improve this organization so I went to go fast you know BK we did it go to go fast and took them from where they were, you know, running respectfully. They and they wanted to get better. They knew they were running in the very back, and they're like, "We want to get better." So, the very back. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they were very just str struggling, and we went in there and saw there's just a lot of things that need improving on their team and people, and so we kind of, 
I had a good group surrounding me and we kind of went in there and tried to f- help it and fix it. So we did that and I did that in 2017 and major improvements. And, um, then 2018, you know, do it again. And you know, what we get, we got some top tens and a bunch of top twenties and just running real good for the, for the equipment and the budget. But then it got to the point where I was like, man, what, what would I do next year? Like, you know, they're, they're a small team they're, and they're gonna, they're not going to spend more money. It'd be millions to even, you know, get to the next level. And for me as a driver, I'm like, I have nothing else to prove or do here. I, I feel like I'm maxed out. If, and I felt like I knew, especially from talks I was having with people and Ford at the time and, and folks trying to push like, Hey, I want to get a better opportunity. I want to, you know, drive and try and improve a bigger organization. I was getting like, Oh man, you're, just, you're doing good. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, all of a sudden I'm like, this is what my, this is what my past is going to turn out to be forever. Mm. And this isn't what I worked since I was a little kid to do. I, I came here to win. And so that's when it finally became clear to me of like, I can't do the same thing over and over and, and expect a different result. I was lucky to do it for those two years, but I felt like I tapped out and that's where I was like, all right, well, either my career is going to go this path and fizzle out and I'm going to be done or I'm going to take the biggest camel of my life and make sure my wife's okay with it because she's, you know, in this What'd journey too. What'd she say when you came to her and said, I'm going to op- opt out of this opportunity and hope for something else? She was 100% on board. She, what if you didn't get another opportunity? What were you going to uh, do? So the the way that I coped with this is finally one day, I swear to you, I woke up one morning, I'm battling this in my head and like, how am I going to live? I mean, I don't, I'm not financially set on this stuff. Um, how am I going to live if this doesn't work out and whatever and then finally one day i woke up and was like you know what shoot we've been through so much trying to dig and and you know get to where i am and i my whole dream is to win in the cup series that i i can live with myself if it blows up in my face and everything fails i can live with myself knowing i went all in and gave every bit of my heart and I can't live with myself. I won't ever be able to live with myself if I know that I took any sort of a safe route um, to collect a paycheck and keep on digging. And I took that path. I would much rather have known I laid it all out on the line and it blew up in my face, but at least know and not question the rest of my life, man, what if I did do this? Maybe I could be out there winning and that would eat me alive more. Sure. What well, you said you didn't have any skill sets. Did you have in your <laughs> mind like a B, a B plan or a C plan on Man, I'm gonna get this job, or I'm gonna try to do this. You were, were you gonna be a physical trainer? What are you gonna do, <laughs> dude? I've battled that. And you didn't have, you didn't even think for, about it. But, but, but had, those thoughts had to lead to a possibility of something. Like even if you didn't have skill sets, what were you gonna pursue? You would have to do something, right? Yeah, man. I have so many limited things. Motivational that I speaker. Enjoy <laughs> financial <in life>. advisor. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I I think about that all the time because you, you'd be you wouldn't be human if you didn't think about what right, am I gonna sure. do? You have to. Um, but I would think about it and never really come up with any good conclusions other than maybe like, oh, man, I like physical fitness and right. stuff. And I've helped a lot of people. I enjoy helping people with that. Um, so maybe. But it, it's just, although I love it, it's not my what I live, eat, sleep, and breathe. You have you to know? be pretty h- hardcore into it to, tr- to do what you've done <laughs> as far as transitioning yourself physically into in a much more healthier person. Um, i I. I care about my my health, but I'm not out there blowing up right. like Matt. <laughs> right. he it yeah, he's swole. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try.